Welcome to Love in the Time of Hydra, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 10th Anniversary Podcast. On this day, 10 years ago, April 15th, 2014, a lot was going on in the world. Happy by Pharrell Williams was still number one. Uh, I don't know what week we're on, but I looked it up and it was number one for 10 weeks. So it's going to keep <laughs> on keeping on. Uh, and the top movie, no surprise, was still Captain America, the Winter Soldier. No thanks to me. Uh, some cool stuff was going down. The, the Supreme Court in India recognized transgender as a third gender 10 years ago, uh, giving transgender folks rights, uh, which uh, is, is is cool. I wish that we were still thriving 10 years later. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, a, a total lunar eclipse occurred. Interesting, because the uh, eclipse happened this week as well. Uh, this made me feel old. Maisie Williams turned 17 on this day 10 years ago. And uh, the Fargo series premiered. And that's still going on. Uh, but the most important thing that happened on April 15th, 10 years ago, was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s 18th episode, Providence, aired on ABC at a special time, 9, 8 central. Uh, I'm Jamie Jirak. I'm here with my co-host, boyfriend, and level one Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, Tony Pilato. Hi, Tony. Hi, Jamie. Hi, everybody who's watching and listening. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I am so excited to uh, announce our guest today. Manis. Oh, there he is. Brett! You did it. Yay. Well, Brett, I think we're so having some Wi-Fi issues. Oh, Are you're we? so welcome. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I... Yeah, 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 you're, you're good. We're you're better good. now. Yeah, we're good. We're mm -hmm. good. All right. Welcome back, we're Brett. We made it. Thank you. Am I the first returning guest? Yeah, yes, you're our first returning guest. What an honor. Thank you so much. Could Clark not do a second week? Is that? <laughs> yeah, no, no. He was actually, uh, he was really down. He wanted to do this episode, but we said, Clark, listen, we got to get Brett back on. We're gonna yeah, to exactly. Listen. Don't be greedy. We, our, we all know who's higher on the Q score these days. Oh, cool. <laughs> exactly. I will say if Clark, if Clark hadn't chosen last week's episode, I would have had you as last week's guest because. Oh, uh, thank it, you. It because is, it's pivotal. It is the guest. Yeah. It's, it's so pivotal. And I'm so glad you're here to talk the aftermath. Um, uh, so uh, let's kick it off with how we normally kick it off. 10 years ago. What were you doing, Brett? Um, 10 years ago. So I always measure time by what was happening in the X-Men comics. Oh, by mm -hmm. the way, it's Gambit oh, Week. Oh, amazing um, sure, yes. Yeah, and so I was I was in a really sad place because this was the peak of the Brian Michael Bendis run in Uncanny X-Men, which is total garbage for me. I was, like, we were discovering that, like, Wolverine and Mystique had a kid and who came from the future, and it was, like, it was so bad, I hated it. However, we're, like, this is Winter Soldier time, so I remember thinking, oh my God, all the Marvel movies are going to be this good <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> so, and, not and they never were that good again. Uh, I and mean, they never we've were had that so good many again. good ones, but, but nothing was ever better than that movie. Correct. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> that, that's, and then Jamie, I looked up th um, uh, comedy wise, we were working on Assemblers 3, our three. superhero. Yeah, sketch wow. where we ex we expanded the cast. Typically, it was a seven person show, and we went up to like mm. twelve. Whoa. So it wow. was it was epic. We got a bigger budget, essentially. I can I'm <laughs> yeah. seeing Jamie's face, and I can tell she she's blocked out so much of her improv. Experience. Well, I wasn't oh. in those shows, uh, so which um, is wild in retrospect. It it is wild in retrospect, but at the time, it did kind of make sense. Uh, but in retrospect, it is like it is pretty crazy that I wasn't in those. Yeah. But it's you know. Yeah, we talked about on our Winter Soldier episode, Brett, about how I didn't see that in theaters. But then if you remember when it was re-released, we saw it in New York for, for MCU's yeah. 10th anniversary. And uh, that was I loved how I was like, Brett, this is we're going to see this. And you were like, you were so hyped uh, to see it again. I'm yeah, so happy. Uh, <laughs> anyway. oh. Tony, what were you doing 10 years ago? Ten years ago, oh, oh, I was working at a sort of a recycled fashion emporium uh, in in Austin, where uh, it was sort of a vintage thrift, uh, but with uh, kind of a modern twist, and we could uh, work work uh, individually with clients and help them create their sort of fashion personalities. 
that was what I was doing. Ooh. Wow, I mm -hmm. wish that was still a thing in real because I that, I feel like I would have benefited from that. You got yeah, um, it was a lovely job. Yeah. I know because 10 years ago was uh, an eclipse. I know what I was doing. I was watching Eclipse, the Twilight movie, mm. uh, which is ah. so funny because this week there were so many memes about the movie Eclipse because of the eclipse that people kept sending me that were like, uh, not to spoil the eclipse, but Bella chooses Edward. Like 15 people sent me different versions of that meme. And I was like, I was doing this 10 years ago. Sorry. Uh, Jamie, this is what happens when you like things as hard as you do. Like if uh -huh. it's going to be like May the 4th is always going to be annoying for you. Like things like this just going to mm -hmm. happen. I don't think it's annoying. I, I, it's, I, I love when people love what I love. I love love for Twilight. Don't get me wrong. It's the fact that everyone was thinking they were being so clever, making the same joke. Same it joke. was like, it was, the, it was the fact that it was the same joke over and over again. And people kept yeah. sending me different versions of it. And I'm like, I get it. It's a joke that I made 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Um, yes. Uh, no, I love when people love things, especially when those things are Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, speaking of people who love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I want to shout out everyone who's been listening and sharing our Clark Gregg episode. That was just... Yes. It was amazing. Uh, we made uh, the nerdy news circuit. We were in articles from Screen Rant, our friends at Agents of Fandom, and a bunch of other sites, and that was so cool. So uh, thank you to, to everyone who just made... Uh, this as big of an episode as it was and of course we've got a pop in chat today everyone's in there their lanyards are issued uh tony you want to yeah. tell the <laughs> chat uh about uh about the rules oh yeah guys don't uh don't spoil things in the chat which is to say that if you're going to talk about something that happens in future episodes just say spoiler alert now our producer maria is not here with us today Normally, uh, I she's the one who will be monitoring the chat, and if you spoil something without saying spoiler alert, uh, she finds you and, and brutally stabs you. Uh, she's not here to do that today, but Jamie is in the chat, and she will be, uh, I think, I don't know if, if stabbing is your own personal choice of punishment for spoiling. I'm not going to stab anyone. I might get okay. a stern message. But I have. I would like to shout out myself for getting the countdown. I almost was perfect. I got Brett in and out. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I wish Maria was here. Uh, it's a lot of work to do everything at once, but we're trucking along. Um, yeah. Brett. Yeah. I do want to ask, so we, you know, we know what an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan you are. You've been on mm -hmm. the show. Um, everyone knows you're a mega fan. Um, mm -hmm. And you also were always pretty much on top of it. You didn't fall off a lot. And so I'm curious if you, do you remember this episode airing, like, right after Winter Soldier? 100%. I, like, this is the most in my element, one of the most in my element phases of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, this is where I was very leaned in because I remember going to see Winter Soldier and then I stood up in the theater and was like, what about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? And someone was like, nobody watches it. And I was like, you're going to now. So I was just very invested in what was happening because it was so, you know, it was yeah. so fundamental. So, yeah. Oh, I bet you that's the same guy that gave Clark a hard time uh, for yeah. that no one watches Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ooh, people were mean about that. Uh, that but guy. Yeah, that was rude. Uh, but this guy, or this episode, Providence, is, is a, you know, it's a big one. It's following uh, in the aftermath of, of the Hydra reveal. Uh, it was written by Brent uh, Fletcher, who, uh, again, was an EP for the entire series. Uh, he previously wrote Girl in the Flower Dress and The Magical Place. Uh, the episode was directed by Milan Shaloff, who previously directed The Asset. So, Brett, at this rate, we need you back for season two, episode eight, The Things We Bury, because that's his last episode. So, we, I feel Ooh. like we need you for all three of this guy's run of director. I like oh, that. director. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say director. the writer. Yeah. The, no, director. The writer, isn't the writer the one that wrote your eponymous episode? Yes. The, yeah, the writer wrote. Uh, uh, um, Did I some... say that word right? I don't know, but I know what you mean. Uh, I think. Everybody in the chat, um, start uh, start looking up the word eponymous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah help us out. Um, but the the director, though, it did uh, this, the asset, and one more in season two. Gotcha. Um, okay, I'm so, back for that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's uh, so keep keep that in mind, and and that's okay. I'm 
it, when Tony leaves the room, I'm going to mention something exciting about that episode. But I also cast... love that I'll know what date that is. Yes. <laughs> your, your show format is very helpful with planning. It's great. Oh, thank you. Uh, it is really nice that way. Um, so the cast have got our core six. Uh, Bill Paxton and BJ Britter back as Garrett and Tripp. We also got some big returns. Ruth Nega as Reina and David Cronard as Ian Quinn. And two very exciting newcomers. Adrian Pazdar as General Talbot and Patton Oswald as Eric K Koenig. Um, so I really wanted Brett in this episode because he's such a Talbot lover. <laughs> he loves Talbot. I am. I am. And actually, it started with this was after here. Yeah. This was super after heroes. Of course yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it started with the fact that he was playing general Talbot. Anytime there was a, a, like a meaningful character from the comics, I definitely was all over it. And, and general Talbot is a big Hulk supporting character. So I just loved that Nathan Petrelli of all people heroes um, was playing yet, you know, a, because it's it's rare that an actual comic book character was on Agents of Shield at this point. They were, you know, here and there. Um, so it was nice to have Talbot. Tony, I'm hmm. going to assume you never watched Heroes. No, I never watched Heroes. And yeah. and I want to say, Brad, I, I didn't realize yeah, I, I know who General Talbot is. It didn't click with me mm -hmm. until just now. Uh there yeah. was like oh. Thunderbolt Ross, and then yeah. when he was busy in the Hulk comics, it was General Talbot. I completely forgot that that he was uh, yeah. that he was uh, taken from the comics. That's really cool. That's uh, yeah. He's a Hulk. He's a Hulk character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I uh, I it's I, I love Talbot, and I think Adrian Pazdar is amazing as Talbot. But it's so hard. I can't look at him the same way now that the Chicks album Gaslighter has been released into the world because the entire album is about him, and I, I am able to separate it for like the show. But uh, I feel like he's somebody I don't think I could invite on because I've talked mm -hmm. about <laughs> the album too much in my life <laughs> right. that it would just like wouldn't be right. right to uh, to have to like to try to get him and like and pretend that I haven't listened to that album a million times. How could you look him in the eye after all the things you said? About you? <laughs> but that what doesn't matter. He's great. Bro, bro. <laughs> I mean, Tony, listen to that song. <laughs> um, oh my God. But that doesn't matter. He's great in this role, and that's what we're here to talk about. But um, the synopsis, you know, the aftermath of Hydra coming out of the shadows, Coulson and his team try to keep a S.H.I.E.L.D. intact while Ward and Garrett continue on with Hydra's plans. Um, so initial thoughts on the episode. Tony, you go first. What? What? Uh, how'd you feel about this one? Oh, man. Uh, it's good. It's uh, it's a good episode. We're, it is. It is very much feels like a kind of a come down from where we were from the previous episode we just saw i've ranked it uh about midway through uh on my age of shield episode ranking so right now uh episode 18 providence is at number is ranked number 10 uh end of the beginning is ahead of it the asset is underneath it um okay so uh really strong episode um i i was it's interesting. It was like all of the, all of the very sudden and uh, all, all the very sudden feelings that I was experiencing uh, at the end of the previous episode were now given room to breathe. And so I just got to kind of sit with all of these questions and doubts and frustrations and disappointments uh, as we carried through with this story. It's a, it still has a, a tension to it. It's a tense episode, um, but it's uh it's a, I think, an appropriate kind of slowdown for where we just came from. Mm, I totally agree, Brett. Yeah, and just because I have to put everything in X-Men terms, you know, this is what <laughs> we call a, ba like, what we used to call a back at the mansion issue. You know, mm. it was just after the big thing, all the characters kind of processing that yeah. big thing. And this is very much that. I will say a lot of the processing is put on Coulson. And yeah. you don't really get to see a lot of the other characters processing it. They're they're still kind of lost in the the dark. That is, there is no shield. It was Hydra all along. It was all a lie. So it's nice to see them kind of feeling around in the dark with Coulson, who typically is their light, just yeah chaotic. You know, just emoting and uh, ultimately being right. You know, which I love. You know, there's like just like put your faith in Coulson, trust Coulson. Um, yeah. it's kind of solidified and validated. And I love that about this episode. 
Um, I also love that it brought back uh, Reina. I love Ruth Nega's character. Mm -hmm. I love her performance in this show. Um, and so, yeah, it was exciting. Uh, it's exciting overall to be in this new phase of the show. And I think you're still processing the feelings, but feeling that excitement at the same time. So it's great. I totally what agree. I, I, it, to bounce off what you were saying about the processing, what I found was really interesting was, yes, all, all of the emotional and mental processing uh, what we were experiencing through Coulson. But the other Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., what was so interesting about it is they were made to work. Like, they, yeah. they, they had time, which is what I really liked. Like, it was like, you got this fix. We got to get this going. We got to get up in the air. And it was like, they didn't have the time to process. And so it was, I I, I, liked, I liked that aspect of it. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's a, it's especially the the Colson of it all is just so great to watch, and the way that they're trying to tr all trust each other, but it's hard. And I, I love Providence. I, I love uh, the the introduction of Koenig, and it's it just feels like last week's episode could have been a season finale, and the fact that it's like it ramped up so high, and now it's kind of dipping a little, not in terms of quality, just in terms of stakes. We're kind of feeling mm -hmm. it out, and we know that with only a few episodes left, like, what's gonna happen? It's uh, it's crazy. It's... There is that. However, they all, you also know we yet to see the rest of the characters learn about Ward, and so while mm -hmm. we're in that dip, you know, though, that yeah. Sky finding out is right around the corner, you know? So it's, it's kind of be. nice to be here because you know it's going to blow right back up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Unless he yeah, just manages to go all seven seasons uh, undercover for <laughs> Yeah, son of a bitch. The, 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 the thing about Providence, and we'll get to it more later, was, was that it's such a relief to be there. Uh, and, but like as soon as Ward walks in, it's fucking poison. Like it's already like, I was, I was so happy to be there and relieved and then he got in there and i'm like fuck you're yep. poisoning this nice place yeah it's so true uh so we'll just like let's get get talking about the episode it kicks off with ward rescuing reyna um from her cell mm -hmm. he brings her the flower dress which i really i so love cute. i um, loved uh, and, ruth nega just like uh in her cell and then when she realizes someone's coming to her cell she like sits all poised on on the edge of her bed but just like puts on her sort of demure uh you know and like i just she, she's so brilliant she crushes this role mm -hmm. it's 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 something special uh and i and i do like uh i like that she gets nervous when she sees ward because she thinks he's a good guy mm -hmm. she doesn't know mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, and her and Rain is not someone who shows surprise very often because she's so good at that. And you can kind of see like she's like, what the fuck? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this episode is Ruth Nega is Raina like being surprised and having mm -hmm. she typically had the advantage over everybody. But yep. now there's so many secrets around her that she's not aware of. It's so it's so fun watching her try to still be that coy like mystique type type and i mean the x-men like have a mystique <laughs> about her um while also like reacting to all of this harsh truth throughout the rest of it mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then we got uh we find you know sky is trying to figure out which bases are secure there's only three including the hub poor colson he's like seven right <laughs> uh it's just Aww. falling like that's so sad the moment where he's like internet yay <laughs> like they're just taking whatever wins they can get mm-hmm uh, uh, you know, uh, but then we find out that Garrett has a base of his own in Havana. Uh, and like, this is a really fun scene. So, uh, Raina meets Garrett. She's disappointed to learn that he's not an actual clairvoyant. Uh, and she says later, she's like, there's a question I would have asked. And I really like what, what was the question? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, or do I, um, and then, you know, he says, welcome to Hydra. And that's another surprise face for her because like, she didn't know she was working for Hydra. She didn't know yeah, Centipede yeah. was Hydra. And uh, and I also love the moment where Ward says he's gonna let his beard grow out because he's in his villain era, and so like that means it's time <laughs> to grow a beard. It's so funny. Fucking it was Ward. I was watching this and I was like, you know what? How did we not know that Bill Paxton was the clairvoyant? It's like it was. It's like such the law and order thing. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. there's a celebrity guest starring on this episode. Did sure. they do it? You know, right. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. is Anthony Michael Hall on this week? Is he the killer? You know, it's like obviously Bill Paxton is the one. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It is because, like, it is funny because, like, Tony, I don't think saw that coming. 
Um, and, no. uh, and I don't think I did the first time either. Oh, which I didn't in either. Retrospect, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, it is really funny. Like, duh. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. it hit me watching it this time. I was like, how did I not know that Bill Paxton was going to be a thing? Anyway. <laughs> uh tony any thoughts about that havana base oh so cool uh yeah mm-hmm. I, that's some james bond shit right there i like that very much oh, yeah. i like sitting on a barber chair that goes uh, into a subterranean villainous lair <laughs> with all kinds of shit you stole uh yeah really cool uh i'm into it um we aren't uh is, is the next thing like trip like first of all i didn't get to say this in the last episode because you know, we were talking to Clark, and we were talking to Clark, Clark, you know, just let Clark roll. But w- the fact that we got to keep Trip uh, during this shakeup really meant a lot to me. Because I <laughs> was, I yeah. really like Trip, and I was like, I don't want to lose Trip. And we have not lost Trip, and I'm really happy about that. Ward can take a hike. Trip is the best. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Trip is the best. I love this guy. So uh, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited that he's here, and I'm excited that... Uh, uh, not to jump ahead, Jamie, but I'm excited that uh, Gemma is making horny decisions to we, insist. Yeah, we can talk about this now. Yeah, this is close yeah. in our in our in the rundown because because like Trip wants to stay and Colson says absolutely not and Gemma fights for him and I love this because she, he Colson's like it's not a democracy and she's like isn't it though like and I love that uh, how bold Gemma's getting like she yep. like the, like the way that she's argues with him and it's from like the change from her from like ever since I think like it, it, that changed her on a fundamental level. She's just a grown yeah. bigger person who's willing to stand up for herself. I also, we didn't talk about this last week, but a moment I love in last week's episode is when she's, when uh trip is like, you're not a very good liar. And she goes, I know, but I'm getting better at it. Like, who mm-hmm. I love that. Uh mm-hmm. But I also agree. It's like, it is slightly a horny decision. Like, are we, are we oh, shipping yeah. them? Oh, I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I personally am. I'm, I'm, it is, it is sad to see uh, Fitz getting increasingly more jealous and disapproving and protective of her, you know? Uh, but that's, I, I don't ship them. So, you know, this is how I feel about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got a Trimmins thumbs up in the comments. Trimmins. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> Brett? Um, yeah, I, I love that Jenna is being bolder. Like, of course you're going to see this beautiful man in a tank top and be like, <laughs> no, he's going to, I would fight for him too. I'd be like, no, he's going to stay. We don't have room for him. He could sleep with me. It, right. It's fine. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm wondering, do we know Tripp's background at no, this point? We okay. Got we you. Do I got you. I got mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh, yeah, no, I, I love it. And I love that. I actually love to see Fitz reacting and having jealousy which is not a um emotion you get from the science nerd supporting character in stuff very Mm -hmm. often you know so to for jenna to start to advocate for trip and then to see fitz reacting to that like here's two characters i would love to start to see more and more humanity out of and we're starting to see it from gemma maybe Mm -hmm. we'll see it from fitz one day but i think you know the, these are some early sparks. This is in my notes for later, but I'll just bring it up now. Is that I like I love in 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 Fitz's jealousy mode when Trip makes a Moby Dick reference, and Fitz is like, "Have you even read that?" And Trip's like, "Yeah, have you?" And then like he clearly hasn't. First of all, it like it comes off a little racist. I think to like assume bit. that this man hasn't seen. I don't. I, uh, yeah. Fitz, I don't think obviously didn't intend it that way. But it's I like, think it's like, more oh. than he's a job type. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's a soldier, so yeah. Um, yeah. but it does make me be like, oh, Fitz, that's a that's a bold question, yeah. Don't be rude. I mean, I can also see like Fitz kind of liking Ward not being there, you know, because like he's not like the beta male, and then here comes another alpha soldier guy, you know, and Fitz oh, is like, oh, I gotta deal with this one too, you know, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. No. Poor Fitz. Um, Poor I Fitz. also, okay, so then backtracking a little, we get General Talbot in there. Uh, the government's getting in the way. Uh, I really like the moment where, like, he's laying down the law to Colson, and Colson's like, sounds good. And then the thing shuts up and he goes, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> like, we don't want the <laughs> uh, yeah. government up in here. Tony, what were your, in what, what are your first instincts about Talbot? Not trustworthy. Like, I mean, just, uh, I when, when Colson said, 
sounds good. I was like, yeah, no, th this isn't good. This isn't like everything about this guy <laughs> is reading as a uh, 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 very dangerous. Uh, no, uh, he seems not trustworthy. Uh, does not seem like an ally. Seems like a guy who can clean up a mess and not leave any uh, witnesses. So yeah, I think it was the right call for uh, for Colson to get airborne uh, ASAP. Uh, good work. Mm -hmm. Brett, do you do you remember um uh like did you remember Talbot's first appearance like looking back? Did you remember it was just like on a screen? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was actually very surprised when I did the rewatch. I was like, oh wow, that was his first appearance because there's no spoilers here. Obviously, you're gonna get this guy walking into a room, bossing people <laughs> around, just being a general dick like sure. soon. And that's always how I think of Talbot. You know, but mm -hmm. it was nice to have this kind of preview before he actually shows up, literally. I misremembered mm -hmm. as well, which is funny because I have seen these episodes like 10 times. But I was realizing I haven't watched season one in four years. The last time I did, did a full rewatch was before the final season. So there were a couple things that I'm like, oh, yeah, my my brain was mixing the order of some things up, which I'll talk about more when Tony leaves the room. Uh, okay. But another thing in the episode, uh, Garrett and Ward are kind of fighting about sky i like that gary garrett calls her his candy crush uh yeah. and <laughs> i was um, like oh that candy crush is that old huh okay. <laughs> yeah. real hot topic back in the in the 10 years ago oh. um and uh and so uh this is because ward was really upset when Sky was shot. And even though like that whole time, I'm like, I get pissed. Cause he's like mad at, he's like, he was legitimately blaming Coulson for that when he knew who was behind it. Even if he didn't want it to happen, even if he didn't know it was going to happen, the fact that he's like, he, and it's not like he was pretending to blame Coulson. I think he legit, cause like, he's just so fucked in the head. He like genuinely was blaming Coulson for putting Sky in that position, even though it was his boss who ordered it to happen. That's that Hydra brain, okay? That's that cult brain right there. Mm -hmm. This brings me to my next note, which is just Ward sucks very much. And I just <laughs> wrote it down and as explicitly as I can. He, it's been a push pull with him. Then he just went full Hydra, deceiver, liar, murderer, written off. Uh, good luck coming back from this. I don't really give a fuck what happens to you. Bite it, Ward. You're out. <laughs> the end uh sky calls ward and uh tells him that they're scrubbing everybody's ids and then he starts talking about tom brady and tony literally went he would like he would, like, he would. right right like Ugh. the worst guy imaginable of course that's his like go-to guy to to look he's up the to. tom brady of the mcu grant ward <laughs> i mean it's ugh. Yeah, it's so funny you keep talking about X-Men, Brett, and like how you have to see everything through that prism. Well, while well, as we were watching the previous episode, um, we were watching the previous episode before it's revealed that Ward is Hydra. I was having this thought of, oh, Agent Ward is the Cyclops of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because he's uh, emotional and he's a he's a Boy Scout, but Boy he's... Scout always feels unappreciated and i was like wow he really is kind of hitting that character prism really well but then it turns out he's hydra and I had to throw that out uh yeah. it doesn't work I mean, anymore it, it is it is funny though when you think that grant ward is he's it's, he's a cover persona i actually mm -hmm. you know later on i like the getting back into character scene i thought is really effective but it's just so funny that you know this the guy that is underneath grant ward decided that grant ward would love tom brady I, you know like i yes. i can't hate the guy for for nailing the character like that that's right yeah it's a <laughs> it's impressively duplicitous mm -hmm. uh, all tom right, brady well, of course being the quarterback from the new england patriots that's correct. <laughs> yeah thank you uh uh if if i knew that i'm sure everyone else knew that like if, you know um i have seen 80 for brady so <laughs> Uh, I have uh, to okay. on an airplane. I thought it was, de yeah. it was delightful. A good airplane movie for sure. It's it's you guys no know more about Tom um, Brady than I do. <laughs> um uh, what's the other one with the four women that I like more? Uh oh, the book club. The book club. I, I prefer the book club movies, but uh book, you know, they're still they have their place. Anyway, that has nothing to do with any of this. Uh we're gonna take a quick uh 30 second break. So if you're uh watching, you want to refill your drinks, go to the bathroom, uh, we will see you back very soon.
Welcome back to Love in the Time of Hydra. We are here with Brett Manis talking about Providence. Uh, while we were taking our 30 second break, I was looking at some of the chat and it's funny. We I, we actually do have some people who don't know who Tom Brady is because I forget that we have people who aren't from the States who listen to this show. And I love sure. that. That makes me really, really happy. Uh, shout out to all of our overseas listeners. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, we get to the point where Colson is struggling with a lot of things, but he's really struggling with Fury's death because they found yeah. out last week that Fury is supposedly dead. Um, you know, that's kind of the big thing right now. That was his mentor. He recruited him. But then his badge starts buzzing with coordinates and he gets this kind of like new sense of hope that Fury might be alive and he's sending him a message. Uh, and, and the rest of the team are like, dude, you are tripping. Uh, Trip and Simmons like, are like, this is Hydra. May thinks Coulson's losing it. She's like, and then, uh, but like Coulson's still really mad at May. Like mom and dad are fighting. Yeah. And May and Coulson are breaking my heart in this episode. Like they, I hate that they're fighting. I hate it guys. It really makes me sad. <laughs> That's all I'll yeah, say and I'm like, I'm like, you guys, it's Nick Fury. Like, you don't think there's a chance he could be alive? <laughs> you, like, you don't even know the details of what happened. They were making yeah. me mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and but like the part where Colson says, "Let's skip the part where you're worried about my well-being." It just hurts so bad because I think that he knows that May cares he's just of he's just pissed off he's just still salty so he's pushing the, her buttons and and you know he he's right to be pissed but like it's it's sad to see may like sad and sidelined because like she doesn't show a lot of emotion but you can see it in her face that she's sad yeah and when she so is this where she makes the suggestion that she was put on the team for a reason uh that was i think the previous um it's in in, in in the previous episode of the one before that she it, she implies to Coulson that uh, he didn't select this team she, she'd selected this team uh, and or she that does re she, yeah she reiterates it in this moment where she's like you know I was here to put here to watch you and then she reveals watch that you. Fury yeah. yeah that Fury wasn't actually behind uh, the Tahiti project but mm. she doesn't know who it was and uh, and she's worried that. Hydra might be controlling him because you know they didn't know how deep Hydra went and he could have been the one to put to put Tahiti in his brain. Like she's making fair points. It's just I don't blame him for being like, fuck you. Yeah. Right, right. But there's also she's like she's holding on to information that she can't share, also. So it's it's hard when two people need to reconcile when they can't fully communicate what's happening. Yes. in their brain you know it's like i love you just trust me i can't tell you kind of thing yeah. so it just makes it double hard you know she her hands are tied and it's tough yes it is i don't like it no uh back to the 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 baddies the villains uh you know reina so they they gave reina uh the hard drive that sky had put like everything on last week of, of all the, like their big missions but so she's talking to ward and she's she's basically like how did you do that how did you go undercover she's like i met colson he was a good dude um and then like he just like lays it out so robotically like well may was the primary threat so i fucked her uh and like all this like all this stuff um and then uh and then she's he, he makes that comment like i'm everybody's type and then tony went like tom brady uh, that's funny <laughs> that's funny i actually i actually really love that line a because grant word is so hot we know how you feel. B, we know we know, how. we know yeah but b he's like i thought that spoke to his spy craft that he could mm. be, he can be whoever somebody needs him to be, you know, to build trust. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I just, I liked that line for that reason too. Mm -hmm. He's clever. I'll give him that. Yeah. And he also says that thing like where he admits like, yeah, he, yeah. Like I, you know, they're good people and all, but I owe Garrett everything. Like he pulled me out of hell. Like we don't know the details, but we do know that he had an abusive brother. And so I, I, I guess it's implied that Garrett saved him from that situation. And so he has that loyalty there, but uh, I'm curious, Tony, where do you stand now? I know you fucking can't stand him, but where do you stand on like his, where his loyalties are? Do you see him, uh, uh, turning sides again or do you think that he's with Garrett till the end yeah of course he's gonna turn sides again uh, of course like they they they're they're they were telegraphing that to me when you know he shoots a hand 
uh, and then the episode ends. We get the shield logo, and then it's a post credit scene of him just stewing in his doubt and remorse. So, yeah, Ward will flip again, and I'm sure he'll earn it in a way uh, that he'll be uh, accepted back in some form. But like, I just I know I know that that's gonna happen. I feel like I know that that's going to happen, and I feel like uh, I'm what the the thing that I'm impressed about with the show is that I can't imagine how the hell they do it. Um, how the hell you take a character to a break? How you doing there, Brett? You all right? He's uh, trying not fine. to spoil anything. Is <laughs> Tony fine. right? Is Tony wrong? Yeah. So we anyway, that's that's how I feel about Agent Ward. Um, and yeah, the end. Okay. Well, um, I guess one day we'll find out if Tony's right or wrong. But today is not that day. Uh, um, uh, so then they they raid the fridge. Uh, those stupid shield. Lord dummies knows I've been there. Let... <laughs> 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 um, uh, those dummies at Shield let them right in. Like after all, all that, after all that Hydra's doing, you just let these guys in after one little let us in. We're dying out here. Come on. Oh, it's masterful. It's it's a masterful move. It really is. If like honestly, remember the two security guys uh working at the place where Paxton and Greg went in to get the serum coming from the alien blood and all that? Like those two guys were fucking hardcore. Those guys were like click clack, click clack. All right, well, we're not supposed to have people in here. Let's go. And like mm -hmm. if you if we'd have been so lucky to have a couple of shield agents with that kind of intensity would have diverted the entire Hydra plot. But no, you get the two Not fucking softies up there by the sliding glass door. Pissing me <laughs> off. And then they get shot right in the face. Like that was yeah, dark. Like, he, he just right, right in the face. Do they get shot? Woo. Boy. Uh, right after a great, like I love that though. They had to get shot because Bill Paxton couldn't resist. Garrett couldn't resist a good, a good one liner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, an okay one-liner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's uh, the thing. He's yeah, like, yeah. He, he, he thought that was a real, real barn buster, but it was fine. <laughs> Fascists. They don't have. They don't have good senses of humor. God damn right. So they're right in the fridge. Uh, there's a Johnny Horton reference, uh, who was Griffin in the comics. He was introduced in Amazing Adventures Volume Two. Uh, I'm sorry, Number Fifteen in 1972. Uh, Brett, do you remember him in the comics? The Griffin. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I remember when mm -hmm. they made the reference to the lion paws. Yeah. And I said, Griffin. Um, fun fact, Griffin actually has a daughter um, who was a character on the Secret Avengers for a while in the comics. Mm. She was a hero. Yeah. Cool. There, There's a moment in a much later season where something is said that makes me think that made me think a future character was going to end up being his daughter, but that didn't happen based on a line that was said. Um, if you oh, know, we'll talk about it later because that character is far away from coming. Yeah, but. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I could go in more about who this hero you know, is. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll tangential. Talk, yeah. We'll talk when Tony leaves the room. Um, Tony, did you know him? Johnny Horton? Was I've never, I don't know who Griffin is. I've never heard of Griffin. Uh, they, I, it, it's funny, it didn't even occur to me that they would be describing an actual uh, comic character, uh, but I ought to have, considering they were describing someone with lion paws for her hands. I was like, yeah, uh, sounds cool. I would like to know about Griffin. Yeah, if, if I've learned anything from working at comicbook.com, it's if a name is said in Marvel, you Google the name and see if it's totally. somebody. Totally. <laughs> but I don't Google about this show at right, all. I, right, I, I, right. I have a strict no. rule about it. So I just have to wait for people like Brett to tell me things. Mm -hmm. Brett, were you um, I'm trying to think if I know any. I try to think if I know any more fun facts about Griffin. But I was going to say, it's at the. I remember at the moment getting excited that they dropped Griffin, and I have a. I have a perspective on those moments now that I think I'll share later. Okay. All right. Put a There's bit. a lot of uh, you guys are gonna have a long Tony leaves the room. I'm telling you, <laughs> we <laughs> are. It's gonna be a whole other yeah. bonus episode. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it gets hard. It's so hard sometimes. Um, also, okay, there's that moment where uh, where Ward is like, oh, there's another floor under here, and they make the bet, and then Ward makes that comment that he's sick of the food on the plane, and for some reason, that, like, really offends me. Like, me I, I, like of, all, really of, of me. all the things he does, like, don't don't disparage the bus. The bus is amazing. I, the bus has been your home, so you. and 
I, like, I, like, it's so funny. Like, he shot two people in the face, but when he, but when he makes a joke about the bus food, I get like really angry. You're like, about you it. bastard. Yeah. Well, him mm. and Garrett have got this like dick measuring contest energy that actually does like it kind of grates me a little bit. I think it's supposed to in the episode. Mm-hmm. Like, they have this tone, this back and forth, like. Yeah, 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 clever quip, right? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like it's so annoying. And I feel like Ward is doing this thing where he wants to impress Garrett by yeah. saying things like, oh, the food on like throwing the food of the bus under it. Yeah. To disparage uh, your the team you were pretending to be is like yeah. part of it's a, it's a it's a showing of allegiance to that person. It's like when you, yes, and when it's like when you make front fun of like your old clique of high school friends because you're in with a new clique of high school friends. You're like, oh yeah, they're nerds anyway. It's like yeah. that mentality. It feels like it is. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna mention this note I wrote earlier and I already put a check mark by it. But Ward sucks very much. That's that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, late breaking oh, yeah. news. <laughs> put it on a t-shirt what, 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 eventually, I, like, I eventually like i want to have lido t-shirts and <laughs> just ward sucks would be a good on the back a good first yeah. one yeah, yeah yeah um so then we get to like the big the big moment they go to the canadian wilderness uh last week after tony left the room clark told us that because he knew providence was next and he told us that the fake snow was really gross <laughs> I think that's really uh, it um, does look so fake when may yeah. and um who is it? it's may and and sky are walking right <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Studio snow. Yeah, mm-hmm. it gets, and I could also yeah. tell that they had probably a half of an acre that they were just reconfiguring and staging because, like, cut to walking this right. way, cut to two right. other people. Like, that's the same right. path, guys. Yeah, Wait, that's that same <laughs> tree that was next to that tree. Okay. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, this, this thing, uh, breaks breaks my heart. Like, seeing Coulson be pathetic is this. We haven't seen this yet. Um, mm-hmm. he's followed his heart this far. Uh, I, I, I feel I'm, I'm watching it and I'm pretty confident that this is going to pay off. No, no part of me thinks that we're going to enter this new location and there's not going to be some sort of beacon of hope in here somewhere, but watching him, uh, doubt himself and, and realize that he's potentially stranded his team in, in the snowy wilderness, uh, to chase some, wild hair that he wants to believe in uh mm-hmm. watching him process that was really really sad uh and something we haven't seen from this character yet so i was quite moved by it when he it's when he so, says we are not agents of nothing like it's so heartbreaking which is so funny to me because when she says we're not even agents of shield we're agents of nothing i remember loving that line because i'm like yes here we go take everything away from these characters and show us who they are. That's I was so yeah. excited for this moment. And then for him to get so angry about that line, it's so this monologue is so heartbreaking because you could tell he kind of doesn't even believe this himself. Right. He just needs it to be true. Yes. And there's a big difference there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, 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 he has to insist. He has to insist on their significance because He's gotten them this far. It has to mean something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but good news, it back. does. Good news, it does. Yeah. It does. Uh, there's a base here. Uh, Tony Talking was so excited gun. when that base opened up. Uh, Tony was like, yeah. uh, like, just I can see the relief. Uh, and we got Eric Koenig is here. And then it gets Pat better. <laughs> yes. Um, I it's so funny. I feel like Patton Oswalt is just he's just it's not a real show if Patton Oswalt doesn't show up once. Like he's just the the king of guest starring. And he's also he like Koenig is not the only Marvel character Patton Oswalt's played. He's voiced Modoc, he was Pip in Eternals. Like mm-hmm. uh the man gets around. Um, That's right. and uh but I love Koenig. He it's such a great energy that that brings to what's happening because he's he's like nerding out about Colson. He's just he he has not really been in the shit because because he's been living in this fucking base since New York happened. And, yeah. um, and I love that he's like, he's really like stern about everybody. Everybody will be issued of lanyard at a, on a ba- case by case basis. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> but the best is when he pulls Colson aside and he's like, yeah, my bad. Fury's not dead. <laughs> That's so, so funny. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. Just kidding. He's not dead. Like, wait, yeah. what? Yeah, he's not dead. He's he just, you know, who knows? I know, you know, Cap, Maria. Like, yeah. yeah. 
it was great. It's a brilliant application of Patton Oswald. Uh, and, and, but also he gets this great moment of like, uh, you know, Pat Oswald, and you can't tell anybody on your team. And he's like, well, I don't like keeping things for my team. He's like, no, you don't understand. Like, I, it's not allowed. And Colson says, are you threatening me? And Pat Oswald says to Agent Colson, 100%. I am threatening. <laughs> Like, damn. Yeah. Like, Kane, get, Pat Oswald just threatened Colson. I didn't know he, okay, like, this guy's got status. Yeah, Kanan he's a high ranking agent. Have, would not have let Ward into the fridge. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, if no, Kane we'll was in the fridge, right now. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Tony, everyone in the chat wants to know that you deserve a lanyard. Hashtag lanyard for Tony. Uh, yeah, you've earned your really lanyard. Sweet. <laughs> if I get a lanyard, I will wear it on every episode. <laughs> I mean, you wanted a badge, but badges don't mean anything anymore. So now here we go. Um, My badge got blown up by a talking machine gun. I should get a lanyard. Mm -hmm. A fun little story. I, I went to the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness premiere. And when that came out, we thought that there was going to be a lot more multiverse stuff going on you know like we just assumed we'd see more people and i saw Patton oswald in the lobby and i was like we were just like standing there and i went hey man you know that movie was missing a canic appearance right and he's and he laughed and he's like oh and uh so just love for he was really nice when i when i brought up canic because yeah. i'm sure that uh pat oswald doesn't get canic the most when he, people no. see him <laughs> in the lobby. can you imagine if like like there's so many characters not in Multiverse of Madness that all of a sudden it's Agent Eric Koenig from Agent Shield. I'm oh. just seeing Pat Novel like sitting at a con signing Koenig pictures. <laughs> yeah, I will say though, you know? we did get one ABC Marvel TV character in that movie though, which is wild in retrospect. I I do think that at one point we need to Patreon in humans because I've never seen it. Uh, I, when Black Bolt showed up in Multiverse of Madness, I did not oh, know who honey. he was. Oh, honey, I, know. I, will, I will be there for that because it is butt garbage. It is <laughs> so oh. bad. It is so bad. Like, I can't. Oh, bonus episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it'll, that's, be, it'll be something. Yeah, because in our summers, we're definitely going to go through other stuff. Uh, we want to do... Uh, we want to do a, a Firefly dollhouse, uh, which some people in the chat have been talking about today for reasons that I won't spoil for Tony. Um, oh. So, you know, anything that's tangentially related to the show, we will we will find a way. Um, but anyway, um, they're in the pro they're 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 there. Providence. Yay. Um, but it turns out that the hard drive from Sky can only be encrypted by Sky. So right. Ward's got to go back undercover. Um, uh, he, you know, they find out that the fridge was taken. And of course, they're all worried about Ward. Sky calls Ward and he's okay. And then Garrett beats the shit out of Ward. And then Ward shows up uh, at Providence and that's how it ends. And I I hate how much Sky's gushing over him. It makes me so mad. Like that, she doesn't I know. Mean I made that note that they're so deliberate about upping the gush of Sky's crush on War just to make yeah. it sting the inevitable yeah. sting so much. She's like, she's so like goo goo gaga over him. Well, now. they put that kiss in there, you know. They had that yeah. kiss mm -hmm. right before he went out to maybe die, and he's yeah. so he was so manipulative of her feelings during that period. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, she's. Oh, it sucks. I hope she. I don't know. Stabs him in the face. I don't know. Yeah, um, but uh, when we get this end tag with Quinn is back and he's pissed. Uh, I love angry Quinn. Uh, and uh, he, he's, uh, I think, I think Brett, your first, your episode was his first episode. It was I his think. first yeah. episode. Yeah. 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 Um, so he's back. He's mad. But then what? They got gravitonium from the fridge. That's, That's exciting. Back. Yeah. Very interesting. I like how much they've kept in flux and in, in, in circulation and just in terms of all the characters and shit that they've introduced in this season. It's it really feels whole. It feels filled mm -hmm. out in a nice they keep way. The toys on the table and like That's they're right. really good about deciding when to pick up a, a toy and be like, hey, I, I remember this. Like, let's play with this one again. It's really. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Well put. Yes. Uh, anything either of you want to say about this episode before I dive into a little history? Oh, I think I've expressed myself. Yeah, no, I just Great. like, I just very, it's a very exciting time. I love some dramatic irony when the audience knows something that the characters don't. And this is peak that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
a hundred percent. Um, so filming, uh, took place from February 11th to February 20th. Uh, that big turnaround. Um, so this is interesting for the final six episodes of the season. Marvel began the Marvel's agents of shield, the art of level seven initiative in which different images were released, uh, every Thursday before the new episodes depicting like a, basically just a poster for every episode. And there was one last week that Maria had ready to go, but I was so into talking to Clark that I forgot to show it. And now Marie is not here, so I and I don't know how to do it. So uh, next week we will start showing the posters for these episodes, but they do, but it is cool. They have their own little posters. And um, Jeffrey Bell said that, that that was a way to kind of tie the series back to its comics comics roots, which cool. uh, they had thought of like at the beginning, which was really, really cool. We will, we will get those uh, going <laughs> in the future when Maria is back. Um, Tony... That was really it for uh, history. Do you want to say our thank yous before we kick you out? Yeah, yeah. So thank you to Stephanie at Eclectic Muses uh, on social. She did our artwork. And thank you to Ryan Mira of Yellow Pills at Yellow Pills Music. He did our awesome music. Thank you to producer Maria, who is not here today. But thank you in a general sense anyway. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Brett, for being our first returning guest. It's such oh. a pleasure every time. Honestly, that means so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, you. Everyone knows we wanted you to be our first guest. It just didn't work out. So this, this, th we had to give you some kind of title. This is better. This is better. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, everybody, follow us on social media at Lido Pod on Instagram and Twitter. From there, check out our link tree where you can uh, see where uh, all of our episodes are streaming. Like and subscribe to our channels. Leave us five star reviews. Don't forget that if you uh, leave a question with your five star review, we'll answer them. We'll answer some questions. Uh, so that's great. And if you uh, are watching Agents of Shield for the first time and have not seen Beyond Providence, it is now time for you and Tony to leave the room. All right, leaving the room. Everybody. Bye, Tony. Oh. It's up to me to get him out of here. Remove. Okay. Did it. I did it. Gosh. Like, so grateful for Maria, but it is it does feel powerful when I can kick somebody out of here. Um, <laughs> all right. So we obviously have to, first and foremost, talk about the fact that Tony thinks Ward's going to get a redemption. Oh, and, my goodness. Uh, Didn't we uh, all? Didn't I we know. all? Of course, like, he technically does in the framework, which I love. I think it's the absolute perfect way to give him a little a little bit of a good guy turn because it's like a different alternate version of him and I love that but it is wild like because I would feel this I feel the same way as Tony like I I watch enough TV to know that bad guys in early seasons that you love and want to come back like Spike and Buffy they're gonna eventually turn good and the fact that that doesn't happen with Ward is crazy and the fact that it's always steeped in the power of love mm -hmm. and you would think that everything going on with Sky, so wild using that. It, God, it's so hard. It's so hard to, to keep saying sky. We're so close. It's so hard. Um, you would think that's enough because storytelling mm. up until this point has told us that's enough. And nope, just yeah. high I mean, for you. As soon as he drops Fitzsimmons into the ocean, it's fucking done. Like, you just, how, how do you come back from that? It's the, yeah. like, the second you touch Fitz, that's mm. it. Like you're, you're, there's yeah. no redemption. There's no redemption. I, I wrote that in my notes earlier and I started tearing up. I can't think about the ocean scenes without getting so emotional. Oh, and the aftermath. Yeah, it's crazy. The beginning of season two where he's at, it, it's too much. Tony is not ready for what's coming. The emotional, the Fitz emotions are just cr insane. That's why I was like, you know, hopefully we'll see some humanity out of Fitz because all we're going to see for years is fountains of humanity. And I, like <laughs> it's, it's still so early. It's so wild that it's so early. Ugh. It is crazy. I want to shout out Snowbat in the in the comments earlier for hoping to get to be on a guest at season six. Obviously, we're gonna have you on at season six. The number one season six Stan will 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 get you on here in, in five years from now. Don't you worry. Um there I'll was also there. yeah, of course. Uh there's also a slingshot reference. Uh Brett, did you watch the slingshot shorts with you know Star what I'm realizing now? I never did. I came really late to those. Like, I I don't think I watched them until, like, the last season was coming out because I just forgot. Um, I didn't and, watch and, the... And they're pretty good. They're, I didn't watch the Ben Kingsley um, Mandarin one until, like, right before Shang-Chi was in theaters. Mm -hmm. Anyway. All of the little, like, Colson-y Shield ones, I hadn't seen until right before this podcast. Like, yeah, there's the one right. where, like, a funny thing happened uh, yeah. on the way to Thor's camera. Like, I just, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I just 
for some reason, those did not uh, come into my brain. But I, but Slingshot's great. I think Slingshot won an Emmy. Correct me if I'm wrong, comments, but I'm pretty sure it did. So uh, I'm excited. But uh, but that's not. But speaking of Slingshot and Yo-Yo, there yes. Was, so there, I really thought that Yo-Yo that they were going to make her Johnny Horton's daughter in the show, right. but they didn't really right. do that. No, and they did not. She, She's disconnected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Yo-Yo was brought on not because of that Griffin connection. I think coincidence that he was oh. mentioned and that she will be on later. Um, she was very mm -hmm. much a staple of the Secret Avengers, which was Daisy's team in the comics. So mm -hmm. it was it, they were borrowing from the Secret Avengers book, which is why Yo-Yo was brought into into the show. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on this show before, but it took me a while to ship Mac and Yo-Yo because I was convinced yeah. all of season three that Mac was gay. I, I don't know. I, looking <laughs> back, I don't even remember why, but I thought he was gay and I thought that him and Joey were going to be a couple. And I like I, I, I was so, like, I just in my head, that was going to happen. I was so certain that Mac and Joey were going to be a thing. And then yeah. you know, what that that I was so well, because you want you want a guy who's that big and masculine to all of a sudden be like I'm gay and like yay we're no stereotypes um did I say secret yeah. avengers before I meant secret warriors by the yes. way yes yeah okay yeah. secret warriors secret warriors, yeah. secret warriors. um yeah yeah uh, I I yes, really back in, yeah, yeah. I really thought I like I, I Mac to me just in the season two especially uh just had this like gay energy I don't, I don't know what it is I mean um I'll keep uh, it yeah, coming. yeah. I, would I actually that. heard a really great story about Henry Simmons the other day that I will share right now. Um, okay. I was talking to somebody at a party uh, who was in who was in a couple seasons of season seven. I'm not going to say who they are just because it was like a casual party situation. It wasn't like an interview thing. But yeah. uh, she told me that she was in a couple episodes of season seven and was supposed to like get punched by Mac and Henry Simmons was just couldn't do it. He's like, I can't I can't punch a woman. He was like, he was like, she, she said he was like panicking about it. Like, he's like, I'm so sorry. I know this is like a, a big moment for you, but like, I just can't do it. And I'm like, bless him. He's such a sweetheart. Is he working? What's he doing these days? I don't know. I haven't seen Henry Simmons since the show. Um, if uh, he could, my, if he's doing something, I don't know. Um, but uh, if anyone has any updates about Henry Simmons, I'd love to watch him Let doing stuff. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so uh, also, it's just so sad knowing that Koenig is Koenig is going to die so soon. Uh, uh, when, when yeah, he, and mm, yeah, when he mentions like playing with his brother, like we're going to meet all of his brothers eventually. And so that's that's my first. I remember, and it ultimately it worked out okay. So when there was a show about Shield, I was looking for two things: Lola, which we got, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. end of episode one. And LMDs. Mm -hmm. And when they showed multiple Koenigs, and when they showed him, what episode is it where he takes out socks? It, and it's robots all over the socks. Oh, is it? Well, Hot Potato... No, that's not Hot, Hot Potato 2. is just where you get all the cane, like so many Koenigs, but I don't remember when he has the socks. But it did, did okay. feel like... It, I do know. I remember I thought that, that everyone was a thought tell. That. I thought it, I thought he was an LMD, and I so it's yeah. all very painful. But hey, the LMD stuff worked out. It was it's fine. It, it absolutely it is like it is weird. They never, there's just a lot of they, it's like they're just like quadruplets or quintuplets or however many of them because there's a sister in there. Um, yeah. I um, I do like we're so far away from season four, but I really would love to get Pat Oswalt on here for hot potato soup. And but like maybe yeah. by then it'll be that'll be easy. Who knows? That's years away. Um, but okay, so, I it's. I wanted to say that say, it's in, uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting that Gravi Gravitonian comes back in Talbot's first episode. I think that's yes. really a coincidence. I don't it think is. that at this moment in time they knew what they were going to do with Talbot in season five. Yeah. No, Super, but uh, it, yeah. it's interesting. It's like watching back. I'm like, oh, that oh. is an interesting coincidence. Well, this is the connection I made about Reina was like, Seeing her be like, so wait a minute, you don't have clairvoyant powers? I was like, oh, there's a connection I never made that she was so heartbroken about believing that this person was precognitive. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get next season where she her, developed her clairvoyancy, mm -hmm. which yeah. is wild. Mm -hmm. I love uh, poor, that. Poor guy. Raina. Uh, uh, it, like, it's such a, Raina is such a good arc, but it'll always be sad that she you know, guys, because I love her so much. Um, well, I mean, this and, is the and, whole Inhumans thing is going to be sad. Well, 
I, it's uh, season two is my second favorite season, I think, because it's yeah. just it, like it just crushes. Um, also, you earlier made an Anthony Michael Hall joke about Law and Order. And I think did you forget that he was in season six of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I totally forgot. I knew I could tell that you totally forgot. And I was like, oh, Wait. but uh, he's a, he's in he like he's on Kitson. He like he's the um, oh. like he runs the casino. And oh, my God. That's right. And fear and loathing yeah. on the planet is Kitson. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love um, it. Uh, if uh, and fun fact, uh, Brett uh, ha has played Brian from the Breakfast Club in a musical, so I know he's a big Anthony Michael Hall guy. I have, so. I, have. <laughs> I put that. Yeah, I was the final piece of the yeah. puzzle on that show. <laughs> oh, bringing up some memories. Um, oh, I know. Okay, so that's that's all I had for in terms of like Tony leaves the room stuff. Was there anything else that you was coming bubbling up? No, that really was the big thing was the the gravitonium and Talbot. That was wild. The Reina and the clairvoyant powers was wild. I just want to ask, when do we get? Is it next episode or the episode after that that we get the death of? Koenig and the iconic Ward is Hydra poster scene. Uh, I believe that's two weeks. Next week. So next week is um, the light in, um, uh, the only light in the darkness, which is the Amy Acker episode, which I'm so excited oh, about because I love her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the cellist. Uh, oh, I, uh, I know. Um, uh, and then after that is nothing personal. And I'm pretty sure that's it. That's when um, uh, I already know that uh, our my longtime shield friends, Jackie and Sari are here uh, to talk about that oh, one. Maria nice. Hills in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. um, yeah, very excited. We don't, we don't have our guests locked in for next week, but in two weeks, we've got that yeah. one. So yeah, we're, we're a couple weeks away. Uh, we're so close to the end. It's crazy. Uh, I yeah. can't believe how I mean, fast that, this is going. That, that moment is, I'm so excited for you to talk about that episode. Mm -hmm. That moment is one of the best moments of television ever, 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 ever. Mm -hmm. That there's nothing like yeah. Sky seeing that. That the poster. word is yeah i for yeah. a part of for i for, I forgot that like a part of me thought it happened this episode i'm like no they 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 drag that out they make us have to sit and watch ward uh you know pretending there's when he's getting uh um interrogated by Koenig and he's like are you hydra and he's like yes but we're we're all hydra it's like oh he's so good yep at sucking so good <sighs> ah well uh, well thank you so much for having me back <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that we had you on for this episode. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been exciting. We already now know what your season two episode is going to be. Oh, what I wanted Yay. to say is that, that, that one has Peggy Carter flashbacks. So <gasps> I, I, oh, then I know, in. I know. And I, I haven't been able to decide when we're going to do season one of agent Carter, because I want to get season two closer to season okay. seven for the Susa love. But uh, we, yeah. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm debating on that one, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's going to be a good one next season. Um, but oh, anyway, I know my boy. Uh, thank you to everyone for listening. We're back next week for episode 19, The Only Light in the Darkness. Amy Acker uh, will be doing our live show on Sunday, April 21st, with the episode officially dropping on April 22nd. Tony and I are going to uh, be, oh no, that's the following week. Never mind. Forget what I was going to say. Um, April 21st, April 22nd. Check out the episode, all major pod platforms. You know the spiel. Don't forget to tell your friends about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and love in the time of Hydra. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop this stream. You can do it. Yay. Goodbye, Brett. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.